Shen Qingwan and Fang Yanchen have been in love for three years, and originally thought he was the person who accompanied him to the end. When the Shen family was in dire straits, his father was seriously ill, and his brother was trapped, the person he trusted the most went abroad with other women to live a carefree life. Shen Qingwan was completely sober in this betrayal and turned around to marry a man from a prominent family background and noble status in the capital, Ji Yanli. Originally, it was just a mutually beneficial transaction, and the agreement stipulated that each party would go their separate ways after one year. I didn't expect the way the two of them got along to become increasingly sticky. When someone slandered her, Ji Yanli stood up without hesitation, holding her hand in front of everyone, announcing their marital relationship. When the scumbag came back crying for reconciliation, Ji Yanli directly blocked his beloved wife behind him and said, if you appear in front of my wife again, I will ruin your family. When Shen Qinghuan needed it the most, Ji Yanli would provide her with shelter from the wind and rain. Unconsciously, Shen Qinghuan gradually fell into his indulgence later, he took her into his arms, his emotions surging in his eyes and his voice carrying the suppressed dullness. Fifteen years have passed, and finally I truly have you it was a long time before Shen Qinghuan realized that all the coincidences were his unwavering love. From the female lead's perspective, marriage follows love, while from the male lead's perspective, a secret love becomes a reality. Chapter 1 Obtaining Marriage Certificate You are listening at NovelFull.audio Night Bar VIP Private Room Are you sure you don't regret it? The man had overlapping long legs and was dressed in a well-cut and iron black haute couture suit, with a casual posture leaning against the sofa. The black shirt buttons were casually unbuttoned, and the tight chest muscles were faintly visible. Looking up was a sleek and sexy Adam's apple, exuding a strong sense of abstinence. The slender and distinct joints of the fingers casually swayed the wine in the glass, while the dim and charming light in the private room shone on the wine reflecting a cold and dazzling light. He raised his head slightly, revealing his stunning and unparalleled face. His eyebrows were like knives, his nose was high and straight, his lips were thin and pale, his black eyes were cold and aloof, and his temperament was noble and aloof, like a cold flower on a mountain peak. Under the gaze of those black eyes, Shen Qinghuan involuntarily shrank. She knows exactly what she is doing now. But now she has no other choice. Father is seriously ill, with high medical expenses. Her beloved brother was imprisoned for offending a prominent figure in the capital, and his life and death are uncertain. The sister dot and dot law at home is completely disoriented, while the little niece Tang Tang cries every day to find her father. I originally hoped to seek help from my boyfriend Fang Yanchen, whom I have been in love with for three years. Thinking that the family behind Fang Yanchen can also be considered a prominent figure in the Beijing circle. There is always a way out for an ordinary person like her. Unexpectedly, the man who had been in love with him for three years fell in love with another woman despite the continuous rain in the house. With a new lover, there is no mood to care about her old love. Moreover, when she was most helpless, Fang Yanchen couldn't even find a figure. And the person in front of her, a wealthy tycoon in the capital's financial circle, is the only one who can help her. The man's name is Ji Yanli, the person in charge of Xinyu Group. Acting swiftly and decisively, with ruthless tactics, just the name Ji Yanli is already a frightening presence in the business world. Seemingly giving her a chance to choose, but her tone carries an undeniable sense of oppression. No regrets. Shen Qinghuan's thick eyelashes trembled and she blurted out without thinking. Like a brave moth, relentlessly rushing towards the raging fire. Firm yet persistent. This was also a decision she had already made before coming to the nightclub. Father's life cannot wait. My brother's life and death are currently uncertain. She must race against time. The man's pitch black eyes were dim and indistinct, and a faint smile appeared at the corner of his lips. Make that already distant face even more indifferent and heartless. Thin lips lift up with indifference, very good. 
He leaned forward and casually placed the glass cup inside his hand on the marble table beside him. Make a clear and transparent collision sound. Glancing up at the woman in front of him. Raising his gaze, he casually glanced at the girl standing in front of him. Her figure is slender, and her skin is radiant and fair. The simple light purple knitted sweater and half skirt still couldn't stop the graceful figure. Immersed in a quiet industry like hand-drawn comics for a long time, it adds a calm and gentle scholarly atmosphere to the originally pure and lustful temperament. Those bright eyes, a slender nose, and rosy lips. Until now, there is still a fatal temptation for him. The eyebrows were slightly raised, and the emotions in the eyes were filled with a hint of restraint and forbearance. There was a smile of unknown meaning between the lips. The indifference and estrangement shown is indeed that strangers should not enter. More importantly, it is the self.evident strong deterrence and sense of oppression formed by long.term high positions. Standing up, Shen Qinghuan's superior and tall figure was immediately presented in concrete form. Shen Qinghuan lowered her head slightly, lifted her eyes with a nervous expression, and saw her straight leg strode towards the door under her dark suit pants. Strolling meteors. A cold, woody scent was lifted. The private door was opened by the servant, and Ji Yanli walked to the door, realizing that the person behind him had not followed. Looking back, his face was slightly cold, and his tone was indifferent and lukewarm. Not leaving. Shen Qinghuan lost consciousness in a daze. The handbag inside my hand tightened tightly. Here we go. Quickly ran a few steps and followed up. Surprise and surprise. Is this a promise? That's great, brother has been saved. As for the rest of life, the Sword Mountain is still a sea of fire. At this moment, I can't care about so much anymore. Follow the man out of the bar. In front of Shen Qinghuan was a slightly longer and more luxurious Rolls Royce. A group of tall bodyguards with straight suits and sunglasses were divided into two rows. I saw two people walking out one in front and one behind. A bodyguard stepped forward and opened the car door. Ji Yanli naturally lifted his leg and got into the car. Glancing sideways at his back. Shen Qinghuan instinctively quickly got into the car. In no time, the car drove to the Civil Affairs Bureau. Take photos, sign, and obtain certificates. The process goes very fast. In less than twenty minutes, the two became legally married. Shen Qinghuan opened his marriage certificate and looked at the two people sitting side by side on it, feeling lost in thought for a moment. Although I had already prepared myself mentally, when I saw the real marriage certificate in my hand, there was still a bit of bitterness in my heart. In the past, she fantasized about countless scenes of her own marriage certificate. She is happy, running towards her own happiness, running towards Xiaomao. Start a happy life that belongs to them. I never expected that she would still not marry the man she had been in love with for three years, nor did I expect that she would directly obtain a marriage certificate from the person she had just met. Moreover, the person in front of them has always been a frightening presence in the eyes of the outside world. Now it seems that the rumors from the outside world still make sense. Remember our agreement. The man in front of him looked at Shen Qinghuan, who was lost in thought, and calmly spoke up to remind him. Shen Qinghuan closed the marriage certificate in her hand and met her cold eyes, with a stern expression. Of course. The agreement he mentioned was also the post-marriage agreement they signed. The agreement period is one year, and after one year, both parties have no feelings, and the marriage relationship will be terminated in a timely manner. Shen Qinghuan's answer was so firm, because she clearly remembered that the agreement was agreed upon, and one year later, the two could end their marriage, and at that time, she could regain her freedom. As for the situation where the two developed feelings within a year, she had never considered it. Because that's simply impossible. She knew that the two of them were together now, just taking what they needed. She needs to use his power to rescue her brother, and he needs a marriage to deal with the urging of an elder in the family. 
A marriage without emotional foundation is destined to not last long. Chapter 2. Not Accepting Formal Marriage. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Upon receiving a firm answer from Shen Qinghuan, Ji Yanli lowered her gaze, her thick eyelashes unable to block the icy sensation beneath her eyes. Very good, pleasant cooperation. After speaking, he turned to his assistant Xiao Yi and said calmly. Let's arrange it. Standing on the side, Xiao Yi followed his own CEO from the bar all the way to the Civil Affairs Bureau. The question marks in my mind are getting bigger and bigger. Is today's CEO possessed? This wave of operation is impacting his retina more and more. Coexisting with women in private rooms, household registration book, Civil Affairs Bureau, marriage certificate. Oh my God, it's really a long life. Everything completely subverts his understanding of him after following Ji Yanli for so many years. No it has been so many years since the old lady urged him to get married, and he has never taken practical actions according to the old lady's wishes. Not close to femininity, the flower of the mountains. Even Xiao Yi is being misled by external rumors, admitting that the CEO of his family likes men. The flower of high collar actually broke the rumor by herself. Married. And a woman. There is a lot of curious and crazy grass growing in his heart, but this is not the time for gossip. He knows his own CEO well, and now he needs to follow orders. One more word can directly affect his annual salary and even work. Okay. I didn't dare to look around even with one more glance, so I quickly turned around and stepped back. Now that the CEO has obtained the certificate, the next thing is very clear. Go back and arrange to tidy up the Xiyuan Seaview No. 1 where the CEO lives. Welcome to the arrival of Madame Xiao. Shen Qinghuan looked at her and Ji Yanli beside her right now. With an urgent tone, he asked. Now that we have obtained the certificate, I will fully agree to do the things we agreed on next, so now, my brothers matter. Ji Yanli looked at the person in front of him and said calmly and slowly. Since you already know that we have obtained a marriage certificate, I hope that in the future, you will always remember your identity, Mrs. Fu. Hmm. The man's condescending demeanor is extremely oppressive, and his dark eyes are deep and cannot see the hidden emotions. I will arrange your father's illness well, and your brother will also be fine, rest assured. Upon hearing these words, Shen Qinghuan breathed a sigh of relief in her heart. It's okay, it's okay, dad and big brother are okay. Immediately after, the person in front handed over a black card. The hands with distinct joints are very beautiful, and the slender fingertips hold the card. Shen Qinghuan knew that it was his father's surgical expenses. Looking at the girl in front of her with a stubborn and lustful cheek, Ji Yanli smiled unconsciously at the corner of her lips. Her indifferent expression had just faded a bit. I'll be on a business trip for a week tomorrow, so if you have anything, just call me directly. After speaking, the man moved forward with a hint of affection, bent down, stuffed the card inside Shen Qinghuan's clothes pocket, turned around with a slightly cold expression, and walked towards the Rolls Royce. As soon as he took two steps, his footsteps stopped and he turned to look at Shen Qinghuan, who was stunned in place. Half jokingly and half earnestly, he said. By the way, I don't accept formal marriage. What? Watching Shen Qinghuan widen her eyes with an incredulous expression, she stood still. Ji Yanli's lips curved slightly, and she asked in response. What's going on? Didn't you read the details in the agreement clearly? After speaking, the man turned around, took a step with his long legs, and directly got into the Rolls Royce. Soaring away. Shen Qinghuan's brain was still echoing the words the man had just said. Do not accept formal marriage. Protocol. Did the agreement mention the obligation to fulfill the marital relationship? I really have no impression at all. At that time, my mind was full of wanting to quickly save my father and brother. That agreement seems to be at the G banquet. Forget it, now that my face has already obtained my marriage certificate, 
there's nothing to be afraid of. Besides, at present, in order to save her father and brother, she can even sacrifice her life, and she is afraid of such a life-threatening thing as fulfilling her marital relationship. There is no time to worry too much, my brother should have nothing to do now, but the family is already in a mess. Shen Qinghuan immediately walked to the intersection, took a taxi, and returned to the Sunshine Garden. Just as I climbed the stairs to my doorstep, I heard the cries of children and the sighs of my sister. In law Qin Yufen. And there is also the family of the sister. In law, the comforting voice of Qin's father, Xiaofen, I don't think Xiao Bing will come out this time. Don't you see who that person is talking about? Prince Meng of the Meng family, in this capital, we are ordinary people, unless we don't want to live anymore and give such wealthy people a hard time. Qin's mother came up with an idea and said yes, it's okay to live a good life. However, if you insist on poking such things, those who are not promising will accept their fate and live a peaceful life. Now that they are doing well, they have also put themselves in it. Moreover, the elderly and immortal are currently living in the hospital, and their daily medical expenses are not a small amount. I heard that continuing surgery now is simply a bottomless pit. I said Xiaofen, don't give up either. Men like you are destined to have no great success. We are just your daughter, how can we watch you suffer like this? Hurry up and get the divorce done. We must seize this house no matter what. After the divorce, we will sell the house again. You are so young now, and you cannot find any kind of man. As for Candy, don't worry, we will raise it for your parents, in the future, I will call you Auntie. As a couple like us, there's no problem raising sugar sugar to adulthood, yeah, daughter, make a decision earlier, get a divorce quickly, and leave here earlier. Shen Qinghuan stood at the door, listening to a group of people inside discussing his father and elder brother so coldly, feeling a sense of desolation in his heart. Just as I was about to rush into theory, I felt a small force pulling Shen Qinghuan's hem and adjusting her emotions. The person inside the house who suddenly returned suddenly had a startled expression on their face. The guilty expression on his face cannot be concealed. Seeing Shen Qinghuan return, Sister. In. Law Qin Yufen quickly ran up and grabbed Shen Qinghuan's arm, eagerly saying, How's it going? How's your big brother doing? You said you're going to save your big brother, what about others? Shen Qinghuan looked at the sister. In. Law in front of her, with an anxious expression on her face, which could be considered a bit of relief from the disappointment she had just experienced. Although the sister. In. Law in front of her is usually harsh, at least she is still worried about her elder brother. Busily comforting, he said. Sister-in-law, you don't have to worry. It's okay, big brother is okay. I have found a way, big brother will come back safely in the next few days. Upon hearing this news, Tang Tang, who had been silent on the side, suddenly ran over and didn't hold Shen Qinghuan's thigh, crying loudly. Can dad come back? And grandpa, will grandpa still get better? Shen Qinghuan quickly bent down and held the sugar candy, which had been sobbing non-stop, in his arms. Helping Tang Tang wipe away all the tears on his face, he said with heartache and comfort. Tang Tang doesn't cry, dad is fine, and grandpa will also get better. Chapter 3 Moving out from the Shen family You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Upon hearing this good news, Tang Tang was extremely happy and asked again with a soft and sticky cry. Is it true, auntie? Is this true? Shen Qinghuan softly comforted and once again answered with affirmation. Yes, both dad and grandpa can't bear to part with Tang Tang. Tang Tang is so well behaved, they will come back soon to play with you. Shen Qinghuan knew that since Ji Yanli had already promised her to protect her brother and father, he would definitely do it. Money and connections have always been easy things for him. When can your brother come back? It will take a few more days. Do you want a large sum of money to redeem someone? Qin Yufen, the sister. In. Law, quickly approached and asked. Her biggest concern is still about money, redemption, 
and the one waiting for surgery in the hospital who can leave the money. It's rare that we didn't have much money at home, but now it's even worse. Do you want money to redeem someone? Did you make a mistake? Qin's mother walked up from the back two steps and said decisively. Xiao Fen, can't you still see? This family is just a bottomless pit. Married men don't have much success, and there is also an elderly man who has been suffering from illness for years. The annual medical expenses are not a small amount. Not only that, but even my sister dot in dot law has to raise her. What kind of life are you living every day? Since marrying into this family, I haven't enjoyed a day of happiness, even the dowry we delivered to you back then has been subsidized for living expenses. Shen Qinghuan watched as the person in front of her spoke freely here. Not to mention that since my brother and sister dot in dot law got married, he handed over all his salary to her. Although he didn't have a high diploma, he worked in a large state. Owned factory for more than 10 years. Now he has been promoted from a small ordinary employee to a workshop supervisor, earning nearly 30,000 yuan per month. Although his income is not high in a big city like Beijing, fortunately he has a house, and this salary is completely enough to cover the living expenses of an ordinary family. Even the parents of the sister dot in dot law, in addition to their lazy older brother, rely on his salary to make a living. Shen Qinghuan worked so hard, earning a portion of the money to support her elder brother's family's livelihood, and another portion to cover all of her father's medical expenses. Now my older brother and father are in trouble. The person he has been working hard to protect has actually done such a thing of crossing the river and demolishing the bridge. His conscience is like being eaten by a dog. Yeah, daughter, it's not that you can't find a good family. This family is already a mess that we can't afford. Your mother and I came together today to testify in person, and today we will handle the divorce. John's father added with a heartless expression. As soon as he heard that his father and mother were going to divorce, Tang Tang, who had been hiding behind Shen Qinghuan, suddenly burst into tears and ran out, holding Jiang Yufen's thigh and looking up at his already crying face, he exclaimed in fear, Mom and Dad, don't divorce, don't divorce. If you divorce, Tang 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 will have no home. Shen Qinghuan felt a tug in her heart as she listened. The world of children is so simple, but she just hopes that her parents can have a complete home by her side. Quickly walking forward, holding the candy in his arms, he comforted and said in a soft voice. Sugar doesn't cry, parents won't divorce, don't be afraid. After calming the sugar in her arms, Shen Qinghuan looked up at the person in front of her and said calmly, Sister-in-law, I have already contacted you about my brother's matter. There is no need for money to redeem him. I will come back after the procedures are completed, and it will only take two or three days at most. Also, with my father, I have already covered the medical expenses. You don't need to worry about these things. Just take the sugar at home and don't talk about divorce in front of her anymore. The child's heart is pure, and listening too much is not good for their physical and mental health. After Shen Qinghuan finished speaking, she intentionally glanced at Zhang's father and mother standing on the side. The last sentence is what I said to them. Upon hearing the good news, Jiang Yufen's face showed a relieved smile, Great, Shen Qinghuan, how did you do it and where did you get so much money? The man in the family offended a big shot in the capital, and his father was hospitalized and urgently needed surgery. Both of these cannot be solved without a few hundred thousand yuan. I have my own way, so you don't have to worry about it. I'll go to the hospital to see my dad later and see when the surgery will be arranged. Jiang Yufen's gaze swept almost imperceptibly over Shen Qinghuan, with a clear expression. A young girl who only draws comics in a manga room can earn a lot of money. I have been worrying about money these days, and now I have suddenly obtained so much money. You don't have to think about it, you can still see it. Youth is capital. Moreover, the appearance is still so good. If sold, it can indeed fetch a good price. But this is not something that Jiang Yufen remembers. As long as her husband can come back, this day can still go on. 
After all, her parents always hope that she will divorce and get a house, but after getting the house, her parents will definitely give it directly to her lazy big brother Qin Jiwen. After all, her parents have always favored her older brother since childhood. After she got married, the money that Shen Qinghuan's brother Shen Qingshui had stored with her has also been plundered by his parents. Looking around now, it is still Shen Qingshui who can unconditionally believe in and tolerate herself. Other things, she doesn't have the mood to worry so much. It's good if you can come back without spending money, so the whole family doesn't have to break up. Zhang's mother walked up from behind and said with great joy. I was calculating in my heart that no matter what, there would still be people earning money to spend on her in the future. Shen Qinghuan glanced disdainfully at the person in front of him, wanting to say something, but still didn't say it. When the candy is still in front of us, what adults say with their faces torn apart should not contaminate a child's soul. Secondly, this is her elder brother's household matter, and even if there is any further displeasure in her heart, she did not advise you to interfere. Unless something really hurt her big brother and father. By the way, now that my big brother and dad have settled down, I also need to move out and live in the next few days. Shen Qinghuan said in a low voice, moving out like this, at least you don't have to let your sister dot in dot law and elder brother argue over her affairs. Even if she provides too much subsidies to this family, the people of the Jiang family will still see her as a drag on oil. Moreover, she has already married Ji Yanli, and the man has requested to live together after marriage. Now she is going to the place where she should go. Chapter 4 Crazy Chasing You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Move. Move out, Jiang Yufen didn't expect a series of good things to happen. The happy curve on my lips is trying my best to suppress it. You can be rescued without spending any money, and you don't have to pay for the medical expenses in the hospital. Also, this annoying sister dot in dot law has finally moved out. I am simply too happy. Okay, okay, since you've made a decision, my sister dot in dot law won't stop you either. Thinking about the medical expenses just now, and now saying they want to move out. Even discerning people can tell. This is completely selling oneself out. I don't know which old man I became a mistress for. It's getting late, I'll go to the hospital to see my dad. After speaking, Shen Qinghuan put down the sugar and crouched in front of her, gently comforting her and saying. Tang Tang, auntie is going to see grandpa first. Be good at home and have a good meal. The little guy has been clinging to his aunt since he was young, and he said to Shen Qinghuan in front of him with a milky voice. Auntie, don't worry, Tang Tang will be obedient. Wait for Auntie to come back. In her heart, the little aunt is a part of her own family. I have gone out, but I will still come back when it gets dark. Shen Qinghuan felt bitter inside and touched Tang Tang's soft and cute head, then smiled and said. Auntie will buy you some candies to eat then. After speaking, without giving any expression to the standing adults, he turned around and left. Watching Shen Qinghuan leave the door. Zhang's mother approached directly from behind and urgently said. Why did you let her move out? Jiang Yufen said quietly. What's going on? If I don't let her move out, do I have to keep her for the rest of my life? And didn't you also keep asking her to move out before, thinking that free food and drink would cost our family money? That was before. Just think about it, this time she went out for just a short while and managed to get rid of the soldier's affairs and the hospital's surgical expenses, which would cost hundreds of thousands. She still has a way to make money, how could she easily let go? Jiang Yufen sneered, don't you think about it, she's a young girl. Where did she get all that money? Besides serving as a mistress for those wealthy people, how could she raise that money all at once? Don't let them play mistresses in the palace and hit our house. I can't afford to lose that person. After speaking, he bent down and went to pick up candy. Tang Tang dodged Jiang Yufen and ran aside, speaking angrily, Auntie is the best person. Don't speak ill of Auntie. Jiang Yufen was furious when she saw Tang Tang protecting Shen Qinghuan like this. 
She stepped forward and grabbed Tang Tang, slapping her buttocks twice before scolding, What little aunt? I'm still your mother. Don't think about your aunt anymore. She's going to pack and go. If you kiss her, go with her. I don't want to raise a white-eyed wolf like you. In one sentence, Tang Tang scolded and cried. Zhang's mother felt a headache from the noise and impatiently said. All right, your brother hasn't had breakfast yet today. He's just causing a lot of trouble at your house. I need to go back and cook for your brother. After speaking, Zhang's father and mother left together. Shen Qinghuan left the Sunshine community and took a taxi directly to the hospital where his father Shen Haiching was located. At the entrance of the ward, Shen Qinghuan went through the glass door to see his father inside. He had already fallen asleep for a while and his face was a bit pale. The nurse in the ward tidied up the medical equipment at the bedside and turned around to walk out. Seeing Shen Qinghuan at the door, she raised her finger and made a shush gesture. After walking out, he gently closed the door before starting to talk to Shen Qinghuan, I'm in good condition today. I just ate some plain congee and some vegetables, and I've fallen asleep for a while. Shen Qinghuan took a sniff, sincerely thanked her, and couldn't help but look into the hospital room, always feeling uneasy. The doctor said today that the patient should undergo surgery as soon as possible. If this is delayed, it may. The nurse's statement was still somewhat vague, as she didn't want to put any more pressure on the person in front of her. Okay, okay, I'll go pay the fee now. Did the doctor say when the surgery can be performed? The nurse was a bit surprised, only remembering that the family of this hospital bed had not been able to pay for the surgery since admission, which is why the surgery has been postponed. You can go pay the fee tomorrow and meet with the attending doctor to have a detailed understanding of the treatment process. Shen Qinghuan thanked and said, Okay, thank you. Tianma has been bothering you these days. It's okay, go see the patient, but be careful not to disturb their rest. Shen Qinghuan nodded in agreement. After speaking, the nurse continued to patrol the ward. Shen Qinghuan turned to look at the ward. Gently pushing open the door, I walked slowly to the ward and looked at my father with excitement and guilt in my heart. Dad, you will get better. I have found a way to save you. Everything is up now. Without disturbing her father's rest, Shen Qinghuan confirmed his father's condition and walked out of the hospital. Tomorrow, she will go to see a doctor to coordinate her father's surgical work. At this critical moment, she cannot collapse and must have sufficient energy. It was already after 8 p.m. when Shen Qinghuan left the hospital. It was only then that she remembered that she had only had a meal today and looked up to see a nearby stall selling fried rice noodles. It's exactly what Shen Qinghuan likes to eat on weekdays. You can smell the aroma of stir-fried river noodles across the street. At one end of the zebra crossing where Shen Qinghuan walked, he waited for the red light. Watching the red lights on the opposite side with decreasing numbers one by one, and just as the green light came on, Shen Qinghuan looked left and right to confirm safety before crossing the road. My stomach is indeed very hungry, but safety comes first. This is something my father often told Shen Qinghuan when he was young. After passing the streetlight, Shen Qinghuan couldn't wait and ran straight to the stall where the fried rice noodles were cooked. Boss, would you like a portion of stir-fried rice noodles? Okay. How much is it? Twenty. Shen Qinghuan picked up her phone, scanned the payment QR code hanging in front of the booth, and paid the money. As the vendor skillfully picked up a frying pan and placed it on top of the gas stove, he opened it with a bang. The pan was heated and oil was poured in. Just as the oil began to sizzle and make a noise, he heard a nearby shout. We can't set up stalls here, we can't set up stalls. Shen Qinghuan followed the sound and saw a uniformed staff member running towards him while shouting loudly. Shen Qinghuan hadn't figured out what was going on yet. When he turned around, he realized that the vendor of stir-fried rice noodles had already covered the lid of the pot and jumped onto the three-wheel drive, kicking fiercely. Master, my fried rice noodles. 
Shen Qinghuan instinctively chased the vendor in front of him and started running. The vendor in front turned back with guilt and said, Hurry up, keep up, and turn the corner ahead to cook for you. The money has already been paid, and the meal has not yet arrived in Shen Qinghuan's mouth. How could she afford to lose such a meal? The vendor in front was eagerly waiting for the tricycle, which was speeding along the bustling street. Shen Qinghuan's feet also seemed to be equipped with a motor, frantically chasing after him. This comical scene attracted the attention of passers-by. President, the girl just now looked like the new young lady. Chapter 5 Bitches Paired with Dogs You are listening at NovelFull.audio In the Rolls-Royce car on the roadside, the assistant said to Ji Yanli. The young lady is quite cute, she is actually chasing a vendor who stirs fried rice noodles all over the street. After speaking, he turned to Ji Yanli sitting in the back seat and looked outside with a heavy expression on his face. The assistant instantly restrained his expression. The pitch black eyes were shining with a warm light, and it was not difficult to see that the CEO's gaze was also chasing the figure outside the car window. Wearing a pair of shoes with heels and a not so loose skirt, yet running so flamboyantly. Foodie. Ji Yanli's gaze kept chasing the figure until she disappeared into the corner, her thin lips opening and closing, as if talking to herself, foodie. I chased a street vendor two miles away without considering my image. Turning the corner, the vendor saw the girl running after him all the time, apologizing in a simple and honest way, thinking that he must be even hungry. He fried a super large portion of river noodles, drew a pair of disposable chopsticks, and handed them to Shen Qinghuan, saying happily. I'm sorry for keeping you waiting for so long. This is an increase in quantity and not a price. Shen Qinghuan took the fried rice noodles from the vendor's hand and happily thanked them. Leaving with delicious food. After walking back for a while, I sat down on a stone bench by the roadside, ate the river noodles in my hand, and looked at the bustling traffic on the road in front of me. I heard my phone ring. Shen Qinghuan took out her phone from her pocket and when she saw the caller ID, it was her friend Ji Xiaoxiao who answered the call directly. Shen Qinghuan, have you seen that stinky slut social circle? Shen Qinghuan certainly knows who this sentence is referring to. Before Shen Qinghuan could say anything, Ji Xiaoxiao on the other end of the phone angrily said. This couple is really a bitch with a dog, forever and they have the face to show off their love in their social circle. It's like a bitch's mother opening the door for a bitch, she's at home. Shen Qinghuan took a bitter bite. San Ran had just taken two bites, but now he has no appetite at all. I don't care so much anymore. They have nothing to do with me anymore. You're right. There's no need to waste time on a man like you. For someone like you, you need to have a good figure and a good appearance. He's blind. Fortunately, you're not that romantic and won't have to live or die just because of this relationship. Shen Qinghuan sighed inwardly. Three years of time have come to an end in this way. It is impossible to say that it is not sad at all. But now she needs to handle more things. The lives of her father and brother have made her emotional dullness even stronger. Now I can't care about my own childish relationships anymore. By the way, I have something to tell you. Shen Qinghuan hesitated for a moment and said in a calm voice to Ji Zianov on the other end of the phone. I'm married. The phone remained silent for two seconds, followed by a piercing scream. Did you just speak? What were you saying? Ji Xiaoxiao still didn't quite believe what Shen Qinghuan was saying. Before Shen Qinghuan could answer, he quickly said. See you in the same place in fifteen minutes. In fifteen minutes, getting married. Who gets married to whom? The two are sitting opposite each other in a small coffee shop. Shen Qinghuan calmly picked up a glass of juice in front of him and took a sip, a person you don't know. Speak quickly, don't beat around the bush. Shen Qinghuan simply turned sideways, opened the bag placed on one side, and took out a red marriage certificate from inside, placing it in front of Ji Xiaoxiao. 
Ji Xiaoxiao glanced at the red marriage certificate in front of her and then at Shen Qinghuan, incredulous. Are you serious? Are you really married? Ji Xiaoxiao looked up again at Shen Qinghuan, and her gaze returned to the original marriage certificate. I couldn't find any suitable words to curse the girl in front of me for a moment. Shen Qinghuan, are you? I have known Shen Qinghuan for so long and I know the person in front of me. How could I marry someone like this so quickly? She could vaguely feel that Shen Qinghuan's actions were definitely for the sake of her father and brother. Shen Qinghuan lowered her head slightly, pursed her lips, and tried to smile on her face. My father's surgery has ended again, and my brother will come out safely in a few days. Ji Xiaoxiao looked at Shen Qinghuan and felt a wave of heartache in her heart. It's just that it's hurting you, she said Shen Qinghuan didn't want Ji Xiaoxiao to be infected with bad emotions and said in a faint tone. You don't have to worry about me. Actually, the other party is quite easy to talk to. We have an agreement, and after a year, if there is no emotional connection between the two parties, then I will be free again. Ji Xiaoxiao was a bit surprised and said, Really? That's great. If that's really possible, then your marriage doesn't sound too difficult. Shen Qinghuan was amused by the words of the person in front of him. Then I wish this year to pass quickly and I will soon resume my single life. After speaking, the two happily raised their glasses and clinked their glasses to bless. It's getting late, I need to go to the hospital to see my dad later, and then go to my brother's house to pack up. Before my brother comes back, I'll move out first. Ji Xiao Xiao put down the coffee in her hand and said, Yes, your brother has such a temper. You definitely don't have to move out like this. Shen Qinghuan sighed and said. So my brother and my dad, don't talk about my marriage or moving out yet. I will explain it to them later. Ji Xiao Xiao nodded and said, Why don't I go to the hospital to see uncle? You go back and pack your things, and we'll take action in two directions. You go to the hospital and then go home to pack your things. It's too late. Before Shen Qinghuan could say anything, Ji Xiaoxiao patted her shoulder and said. Okay, don't worry, I'll tell you all about my uncle's situation then. Besides, you just came out of the hospital, and I'll give you a video then. Shen Qinghuan nodded, there was no need to say much about the tacit understanding between the two good friends. The two of them acted in a high dot profile manner. When Shen Qinghuan returned home, his sister dot in dot lodge Yang Yufen was eating snacks and watching TV. Opening the door, I saw Shen Qinghuan returning from outside, with a clear expression of displeasure on her face. I'll come back and pack my things. There's a car waiting outside. Saying that there is a car waiting outside already indicates that she is just coming back to tidy up her things and will soon leave the house. Upon hearing this, Jiang Yufen slightly moved her body and made way for Shen Qinghuan to come in. Chapter 6 Young Madam, Why Are You Running? You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Tang Tang has fallen asleep. Shen Qinghuan was right at the door of the little one's bedroom where he was sleeping. He looked at the chubby face of the little one when he was asleep for a while, and his eyes softened. During the day, she promised the little one to come back and play with her today. Now she needs to pack up and leave. Tang Tang has been raised by her since childhood. I don't know if she will cry and look for her aunt when she wakes up tomorrow morning and sees that she is no longer at this house. Aren't you packing up? Jiang Yufen sat on the sofa in the living room, eating melon seeds, with a cold reminder in her tone. Shen Qinghuan took a sniff and turned to the bedroom where she usually slept to tidy up her things. Because this house was originally not big, the bedroom she lived in was even smaller and pitiful. Strictly speaking, it could only be considered a miscellaneous room. Her personal belongings were very few, and soon they were all packed into a 20-inch suitcase. As I turned around, I was about to say to my sister dot in dot law that my dad would undergo surgery tomorrow and I hoped she could accompany me to the hospital when I saw Jiang Yufen go to the bedroom and close the door. 
Shen Qingwan went downstairs with her luggage, walked out of the Sunshine community, and took a taxi while walking along the roadside. Isn't that the new young lady? In a black extended version Rolls Royce, Ji Yanli heard a reminder from his assistant Xiao Yi and looked out of the window from the magazine in his hand. I saw that familiar figure. Holding a suitcase in my hand, I walked while taking a taxi to the bustling traffic on the roadside. Follow up. A low voice commanded. Rolls Royce drove straight toward Shen Qingwan. It's not easy to take a taxi in this place. The assistant on the side, Xiao Yi, pursed her lips and smiled. Unexpectedly, the CEO of his own company didn't care much about this newlywed young lady, but only the onlookers could see it clearly. Their CEO of the Jailing Flower has slowly begun to melt. Shen Qinghuan was originally standing on the roadside taking a taxi, but at some point an ultra-luxury car began to catch up with him. She walks, it also walks. Shen Qinghuan's heart suddenly became alert. This big night, it must be a scammer. Feeling scared in the heart, the faster the footsteps underfoot. At this point, I have no intention of taking a taxi, safety is crucial. I have seen too many scenes like this. It's dark at night and the wind is high, and girls are being tracked or boarded by unfamiliar cars. Later on, the tragic reality was so overwhelming that just thinking about it made me feel heart-wrenching. Ji Yanli saw Shen Qinghuan wanting to pull his suitcase faster and faster, and his nervous expression looked as if he had encountered a bandit. A cold smile broke through my lips. Hey! Why is the young lady running so fast? Why did she meet us like she saw a bandit? Xiao Yi kept muttering on the side. As Ji Yanli's gaze faded, he immediately realized that his speech was not so appropriate. Accompanied by a smiling face, he said with an unworthy expression. It's me, it's me, I'm a bandit, I'm a bandit. Ji Yanli's gaze returned to the hurried figure outside the window. Shen Qinghuan watched as the car chased her relentlessly and quickened her pace once again. My heart is also pounding non-stop. I don't know what kind of person is inside the car, why have I been relentlessly pursuing her like an extremely ordinary person? President, did Madame Xiao not recognize our car? Xiao Yi beside her cautiously reminded. If Madame Xiao knew that you were sitting in the car, she wouldn't have run so fast. After speaking, Ji Yanli did not respond quickly, but the warm light in his dark eyes immediately opened the car window in front of him. Looking sideways at the window, Lu Xiaoyi saw that his own CEO had already achieved this. I also want to do an assist myself. So he shouted to Shen Qinghuan outside the car window, Madam Xiao, it's the CEO. I'll take you home. With such a shout, Shen Qinghuan, dragging his luggage and walking rapidly, was taken aback and stopped. Xiao Yi smiled happily on the side and said, Look, Madam Xiao didn't recognize us just now, after all, we were sitting in the car. Shen Qinghuan turned around and saw a handsome and powerful man sitting in the car. But the expression on his face did not relax, but instead, as if frightened, he suddenly grabbed the suitcase and ran quickly. No. I said Madam, why are you running? After saying that, he looked at his own president with an embarrassed face and couldn't help roast. I said CEO, Madam. I didn't recognize you just now, did I? After finishing a sentence, looking at the cold and aloof aura of the CEO next to him, he quickly covered his mouth and dared not say another word. Ji Yanli looked at the hasty fleeing figure and a slight smile curved her lips. Still so timid. Words fall. Signal the driver to stop the car. Pushing the door open, I got off the car and strode toward Shen Qinghuan's direction. Shen Qinghuan dragged his suitcase and stumbled for a long distance, exhausted and panting, feeling dizzy and dizzy. Finally, I stopped and bent over, holding onto my knees with both hands, panting heavily. When I turned around, I saw a tall figure standing behind me with one hand in a pocket. Shen Qinghuan's first feeling was that the people behind him were planning to have ulterior motives against him. 
so regardless of the situation, he grabbed his luggage and ran away again. Ji Yanli sneered indifferently, it seemed that he had really forgotten all about his newlywed husband. Stepping forward with great strides, she pressed down on the suitcase in Shen Qinghuan's hand with one hand, and spoke softly. You. Before the words fell into place, Shen Qinghuan swung his shoulder bag straight towards Ji Yanli, throwing it all over the place. The stainless steel insulated cup inside the bag hit Ji Yanli's elbow straight. Ji Yanli felt pain from eating and his hand holding the suitcase loosened. Shen Qinghuan got an opportunity and quickly dragged his luggage forward. Running and shouting loudly at the same time. Help, help, help me quickly. Yes, she has learned many methods of self-defense before. Being tracked and entangled in such an environment must attract the attention of surrounding pedestrians, which can make oneself safer. Sure enough, Shen Qinghuan's series of actions did indeed cause pedestrians on the roadside to stop and watch, and enthusiastic people saw this situation at first glance. How dare you bully a little girl in broad daylight? This is simply challenging the bottom line of the public. Three or five people came up from within the crowd, blocking Ji Yanli from engaging in any harmful behavior towards the girl. Ji Yanli. Dot. Chapter 7. Is a bit familiar to the eye. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Some people in the crowd inevitably started to criticize. Look at what kind of society it is now, there are still people tracking girls on the street. Such a despicable thing can be done. Yeah, look at how scared the girls are. No, it's still on such a busy road section. If it's in some remote places, what might happen? I really can't tell that this man looks so mischievous, he's actually a psychopath. TSK TSK TSK, you never know how dark a person with a righteous appearance is inside. Zero tolerance towards such people, call the police, and don't let such people harm society. Shen Qinghuan breathed a deep sigh of relief when she heard that the man behind her was no longer chasing her closely. Watching so many people gathered around, there were even people helping me report to the police. It's safe now. Shen Qinghuan's expression relaxed slightly, and she instinctively turned back to look at the man who had been chasing her for two miles. At first glance, it's clear to see. But the man in front of me looks a bit familiar. Especially those deep eyes, when they look over, there is an inexplicable sense of oppression. It's also so familiar. Wait a minute. Isn't this person the one who took the wedding certificate with him today? Quickly took out the red wedding certificate from his bag, opened it, looked at the person sitting next to him in the photo, and then looked at the man surrounded by a group of enthusiastic people. It seems that it is indeed him. Shen Qinghuan quickly returned and said to the crowd entangled around him. That. I seem to have made a mistake. He's my. Husband. When Ji Yanli heard this sentence, his originally furrowed brow slightly relaxed. I still have a conscience. When all the enthusiastic people on site heard the word, husband, they looked at Shen Qinghuan in surprise. Then the group let out a, hey, sound. How long has it been since we last met? I don't even know my husband anymore. Yeah, couples need to spend more time together to strengthen their relationship. Otherwise, meeting suddenly is no different from encountering robbers halfway through. Shen Qinghuan looked at the people around him, feeling embarrassed and wanting to get into the hole. But the man in front of him remained indifferent as always. There was no hint of panic, and he was even watching with interest how the person in front of him ended. Shen Qinghuan said to the surrounding crowd. Thank you all for your hard work. I'm sorry to disturb you all. A group of people confirmed it was a misunderstanding, so they didn't say anything and dispersed. Looking at the people who had just been surrounded, the atmosphere suddenly dissipated, and the tension between the two gradually increased. Shen Qinghuan tried to break the awkwardness between the two. He first smiled awkwardly, but his tone increased several decibels as he spoke. Hello, long time no see. 
Ji Yanli looked at the person in front of him with deep eyes and a hint of sarcasm on his lips. His eyebrows were slightly raised. It seems like I need to do something to deepen my newlywed wife's impression of me. As she spoke, she glanced at the girl in front of her with a slightly cold and thin expression. Otherwise, the next time I see you again, will you treat me as a criminal and let the police take me away? Shen Qing chuckled and shook his hands, saying. No need no need, after this time, I have already left a deep impression. I will definitely not admit my mistake again next time. Next time. The man's voice was cold and spoke with an undeniable sense of oppression, making people unconsciously feel a chill. No next time, no next time, he he. Shen Qing smiled happily, after all, both father and brother were saved this time because of this man. Moreover, I don't remember this person since I just obtained the certificate, and there is no one left. At this time, speak softly. The man looked at the girl in front of him with an honest attitude, his eyebrows slightly raised, and a smile on his lips that didn't reach his eyes. Turn around and walk towards the direction you are coming, with your long legs open. Standing in place for a while, Shen Qinghuan finally saw the man in front of her. He was dressed in a well-cut and iron black haute couture suit, with wide shoulders and thin waist, and long legs straight under dark suit pants. Walking with a gust of wind, although just a silhouette, she still clearly felt the man's powerful aura from the inside out. Such a person would still be urged by their family to get married. There won't be any hidden illness, will there? Thinking about this, Shen Qinghuan unconsciously thought of what he suddenly mentioned today when he was getting the certificate. Not accepting formal marriage. Oh, maybe it's just scaring her. Ji Yanli took two steps away and noticed that the girl behind her did not keep up. Her footsteps paused slightly and she stopped. Turning his head, he glanced at Shen Qinghuan, who was stunned behind him, with a cold and thin tone, Don't you go home yet. Ah! Shen Qinghuan immediately regained consciousness, Oh! Here we are. Yes, they are now married, go home, go back to their homes. Shen Qinghuan hurriedly grabbed the suitcase and ran up to follow. The wheels of the suitcase made a rumbling sound, drowning out the footsteps of the two people and even the sounds of cars around them. When I was in school, I used to live in the dormitories, but after graduation, I directly moved into my older brother's house. I have never moved or traveled far, so the suitcase was bought for 200 yuan when I was in school before. Originally, it was not a silent wheel, and coupled with the fact that it has been around for some years, the zipper pull rod is a bit awkward. The more the two walked, the more abrupt the rumbling and creaking sound of the luggage carried behind them became. Ji Yanli, who was walking ahead, suddenly stopped in his tracks. Shen Qinghuan was unprepared and kept running at a fast pace, following behind, directly colliding with the man's solid back. Shen Qinghuan suddenly felt a sharp pain in his nose and began to complain unconsciously. Is your back made of reinforced concrete? I almost knocked my nose off. Walk well, why did you suddenly stop? When speaking, the pain at the tip of the nose suddenly surged up, only feeling a burning pain throughout the entire nose. When was Ji Yanli asked so many times with such a heavy head and face? After all, he has been in a high position for a long time, and when he speaks, he always gives orders to others. Apart from being strictly taught and scolded by his elders in childhood, no one dares to speak in this tone in front of him. But as he watched the girl in front of him, her originally delicate and perky nose turned red from the impact, tears also welled up in her eyes, and she glared at him in anger. At this moment, he felt a fleeting sensation in his heart, as if he had been scratched by a cat, piercing with pain. I just wanted to reprimand, so I swallowed it hard. Taking one step forward, he effortlessly lifted the suitcase from Shen Qinghuan's hand into his own. If the suitcase is not on the ground, there will naturally be no noise. Chapter 8 That man, he's so handsome. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Shen Qinghuan trotted after Ji Yanli all the way, 
and soon arrived at the luxurious Rolls-Royce parked conspicuously on the roadside, causing passers-by to look sideways. On both sides of the luxury car stood two rows of bodyguards in suits and leather shoes. A handsome and unparalleled man, with a gust of wind at his feet, walked towards the car like a banished fairy. People can't help but stop and look sideways. Some girls were surprised by the sight in front of them and covered their mouths. Staring blankly at the person in front of him. Shen Qinghuan saw the scene in front of her and quickly pulled up her hair that was scattered on the side of her face, blocking it in front of her like a mask. If you do this, then others won't recognize her. Her daily life is very ordinary, quiet commuting, and she doesn't have many friends in her life. With such entanglement, Shen Qinghuan doesn't want anyone to know about the intersection she has with the man in front of her. Even if she knew, Shen Qinghuan didn't want others to see her clearly. After all, for a girl like her from an ordinary background, in the eyes of others, she was just lucky enough to make a deal with such a wealthy family with her youth and body. At this moment, Shen Qinghuan also vaguely heard the whispers of communication within the crowd. Oh my goodness, this is really the first time I've seen such a majestic longing, and have you seen it? That man, he's so handsome. Yes, that handsome man who possesses both wealth and beauty, I really don't know what kind of woman such a man would choose as his lifelong partner. Hey! Did you see that? Is there a woman following behind him? Isn't it? If you didn't say it, I thought she was a maid. She looks so ordinary, shouldn't she be the woman chosen by this handsome guy? How did you trace her to be ordinary? Didn't you see that her face was blocked? I don't know what kind of beautiful woman she was in the prime below that was blocked. Shen Qinghuan vaguely listened to the people whispering about her in the crowd, feeling a little nervous. Subconsciously, she lifted more hair in front of her. Walking to the side of the car, the car door had already been opened by a bodyguard. Ji Yanli lifted his leg and got into the car, while Shen Qing hesitated at the door for a moment. It wasn't until the cold gaze of the man on the car swept over that Shen Qinghuan instinctively followed suit. The car door behind was closed by the bodyguard, and in an instant, there were only the two of them in the less spacious car. Shen Qinghuan instinctively collected her clothes, with subtle movements, trying to distance herself from the person in front of her. Although the small movements were very careful, the man in front of him caught a glimpse and said with a sarcastic tone. Is it the same with someone surnamed Fong? Shen Qinghuan didn't react for a moment and was stunned before remembering that the person beside him was talking about Fong Yanchen. I'm just not sure why the person around me knows about their past. No, it's not. Shen Qinghuan replied with a faint tone, only responding to the man in front of her without thinking too much. I used to be with Fong Yanchen for three years, and although we got along quite well, we haven't had a romantic relationship yet, at most just holding hands. When Shen Qinghuan thought of this, she also wondered in her heart whether, as her best friend Lin Xiaoqiao said, men always need to paint something when they are with you, one is money, and the other is color. If you don't get both, then a man's patience will eventually wear off. Money, Shen Qinghuan's family has always been relatively poor, and he was the one who applied for financial aid when he was in school. So this is definitely not something that the man covets. As for color. Is it really because he persisted in not giving that he left? Thinking of something else, Shen Qinghuan heard the people around her sigh lightly. Shen Qinghuan looked over and saw the man's eyebrows slightly furrowed, his face gloomy, and an indescribable coldness. At this moment, I realized how misleading my answer was just now. I want to explain something, but I don't know where to start. Just casually saying. Don't misunderstand. It's better not to say anything that has no effect. For a moment, the car was once again plunged into endless embarrassment. The atmosphere inside the car gradually became tense. Shen Qinghuan couldn't find any topic to break the awkward atmosphere between the two at this moment. Your father and your brother, I have arranged everything, you don't have to be so nervous. Shen Qinghuan was surprised for a moment. 
Did he just think that all her nervousness came from this? But what he said cannot be refuted, after all, she has been worrying about her brother and father's affairs these days. Thank you. Shen Qinghuan spoke in a sincere tone. Although this matter was also a transaction between them, Shen Qinghuan still felt that he was the one who benefited more from the agreement marriage between the two, my father's medical expenses, I will. Shen Qinghuan didn't want to take advantage of it, after all, hundreds of thousands of medical expenses are not a small number. I will gradually switch to you in the future, but it may be a bit slow. Shen Qinghuan still hopes to owe less to others. Let's talk about it later. The words of the man beside him are cold and indifferent, which cannot be questioned. There was no further conversation between the two afterwards. In no time, the car drove to the villa area of Xiuan Haijing No. 1. It is also the most high dot end villa area in Beijing. I went straight to the underground garage. Due to the non dot stop rush for the sake of his father and brother these days, and the inability to sleep or eat well every day, Shen Qinghuan finally had a little glimpse of the most concerning thing in his heart today. He leaned against the car and fell asleep like this. I don't know when, but Shen Qinghuan woke up in a daze. In a daze, I turned my head and saw a man sitting upright beside me, with his eyes closed and focused. I'm sorry, I just fell asleep. Shen Qinghuan awkwardly said, Did I sleep for a long time? Ji Yanli had a calm expression and a faint tone. The time is not long. Shen Qinghuan looked at the man's deep and bottomless eyes, unsure for a moment whether what the man had just said was true or false. In my memory, I slept for a long time and had a long dream. After waking up, there was a slight thirst in the mouth, but for some reason, there was a cold and moist touch between the lips. Get off the car. The two got off the car together and walked towards the elevator hall. Chapter 9 Is called Little Auntie. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Ji Yanli walked ahead, while Shen Qinghuan walked behind. Standing half a step behind him, Shen Qinghuan instinctively looked behind him. No need to look, there are no onlookers here. Ji Yanli spoke calmly, then turned her head slightly. Shen Qinghuan's words were clearly meant for her to hear. You don't need to block anything either. Shen Qinghuan's cheeks immediately turned red. Just now in the bustling city, when we walked towards the car together, she was clearly behind us. Why did he know that she used her hair as her cheek? Shen Qinghuan awkwardly explained. I'm afraid that being seen by people you know will have a negative impact on you. In fact, this is also a part, and more importantly, Shen Qinghuan doesn't want those people to pay too much attention to him. A year of arranged marriage passed quietly, and after that, there was no intersection between the two, after all, there was such a huge difference in status. As for the contract, it is even more impossible for two people to develop feelings. This kind of marriage is really meaningless for more people to know. Is that right? Ji Yanli's tone was cold and rhetorical. Thinking about the softness between my lips just now. My heart slightly eased. Shen Qinghuan realized that there was a slight anger in the tone of the man beside him, and he dared not say anything more. This kind of topic is really getting darker and darker. Stare at the numbers on the elevator. Although it is a standalone villa how could Shen Qinghuan feel that the elevator came so slowly? With a ding sound, the elevator finally arrived and the door opened. Shen Qinghuan immediately reminded the man in front of him to enter the elevator. Ji Yanli walked in, and Shen Qinghuan immediately followed in. I'm afraid there might be someone else following in. Ji Yanli looked at the person in front of him, with a faint smile on his lips that was unclear in meaning. The elevator arrived inside the villa. Shen Qinghuan glanced at the unfamiliar villa and the lobby on the first floor. Looking around, the second floor should be the bedroom. On the third floor, it's probably a gym or a study. Are you still tired? Watching the girl beside her looking at the house in front of her in a strange way, Ji Yanli's tone was a faint reminder. Oh, 
I'm looking for something. After speaking, Shen Qinghuan instinctively turned back to look for the suitcase he had carried with him. After spinning around, I didn't see my suitcase. Looking up at Ji Yanli, I realized that on the way back, the man in front of me had already held the suitcase in my hand. But now, looking around, I don't see the man holding his suitcase in his hand. That. My suitcase. Ji Yanli's tone was faint, it's almost time to go to bed. What else do you need a suitcase for? Are you leaving? Shen Qinghuan shook his hands and shook his head like a tambourine, saying. No, no, there are some things inside that box that I need to sleep with. In the suitcase, there are some of her pajamas, underwear, and other clothes. Come in here, she can't sleep without clothes at night, and Shen Qinghuan looked up at the bedroom upstairs, and the smile on her face slowly disappeared. For some reason, she thought of the time when she was getting the certificate. The man in front of her said he didn't accept the new marriage and even said she didn't read the contents of the agreement carefully. When he thought of this, Shen Qinghuan felt timid. I won't have to. Tonight just as I thought of this, I suddenly heard the ringing of my phone in my pocket, when you looked at me, I had already fallen. Being with you is the happiest decision of my life. Shen Qinghuan, whose nerves had just been tense, suddenly heard such a ringing sound, which startled her. She then realized the sound inside her phone's ringtone. Looking at the person in front of me again, those deep eyes were staring at me for an instant. In this scene, coupled with the awkward and captivating ringtone lyrics, Shen Qinghuan really wanted to find a hole to burrow into for a moment. Looking down again, she saw the phone call from her friend Ji Xiaoxiao. Shen Qinghuan sorted out her flustered emotions and answered the call. Little did she know her inner turmoil, and she didn't know which finger accidentally turned on the voiceover of her phone. The voice on the other end of the phone suddenly rang. I said Zaya Kingwen, the wedding partner you showed me last time was so excited that I forgot what he looked like. Today, I remembered to ask you, send me a photo of that man later and let me take a look. Let me help you identify the bitch and see if that man is really good. The person on the other end of the phone, Ji Xiao Xiao, has been quite open dot minded since childhood. The ending of the three words, can't do it, is very ambiguous, and Shen Qinghuan can also hear that the person on the other end of the phone is talking about whether it's okay or not. When I heard this sentence, my originally flushed cheeks felt even more embarrassed and flushed. Before Shen Qinghuan could say anything, he heard Ji Xiao Xiao's fiery speech over there once again. By the way, Qinghuan, where have you and your newlywed husband progressed now? Have you already rolled over the sheets? How is it? Tell me quickly, is your man's life good or not? When Shen Qinghuan heard this, she couldn't bear to listen anymore. She looked up at Ji Yanli in front of her, shaking her hands like a tambourine. Don't signal the man in front of you not to listen to Ji Xiao Xiao's nonsense on the phone. On the other end of the phone, Ji Xiao Xiao heard no sound here and was also puzzled, not knowing what had happened here. Just shouting in confusion over the phone. Ching Wan. Zai King Wen. However, Shen Ching Wan on this side had completely petrified. Looking at the man in front of him with deep and bottomless eyes, there was an indescribable awkwardness just by looking at him lightly. The phone in his hand was pulled by a long and clearly defined palm, and Shen Qing Huan's eyes followed the phone straight from his own hand to the man in front of him. The man's thin lips opened and closed before the meeting, and he spoke coldly into his phone. Can you call Qing Huan? It's called anti dot. For a moment, the previously noisy voice on the phone suddenly stopped. Shen Qing Huan also looked at the man in front of her in shock. I didn't go around for a while. What did that sentence mean just now? The three of them remained silent for an unknown amount of time, and Ji Xiao Xiao on the other end of the phone exclaimed in terror. What? Uncle. Ching Wan. You. You're married. Chapter 10. Uncle is so fierce, run quickly. You are listening at novelfull.audio.
In front of Shen Qinghuan, Ji Yanli had already cut off the conversation with Ji Xiaoxiao. Looking at the person in front of him, he said in a faint tone. You have everything you need here. It's getting late, let's rest early. The man in front of him had a calm expression on his face. The phone call from Tong just now, and the words he is saying now, seem to have no waves. Shen Qinghuan's mind was filled with the words from Ji's short novel just now. My cheeks are already red and can drip blood. But as I looked at the man in front of me with a calm expression on his face, I also breathed a deep sigh in my heart. Just after relaxing for a while, I saw the man who had already taken two steps suddenly stop in his tracks. Shen Qinghuan's mood also rose with the person in front of him. As the person in front of me slowly turned around, there was a hint of exploration in his dark eyes. Upon closer inspection, it was not difficult to see that the man in front of me had a hint of happiness on his eyebrows. In a low voice, he said. I hope you are always ready. Ha, huh, Shen Qinghuan was stunned for two seconds, unsure of what the person in front of him was saying. The man in front of the meeting opened and closed his thin lips, and said softly. Let me remind you. Originally, Shen Qinghuan was not sure what the person in front of him meant, but the tone he just spoke was very familiar. It's very similar to it's very similar to the few words he uttered when he opened and closed his thin lips during the process of obtaining the certificate. Do not accept formal marriage. Thinking back to his friend Ji Xiaoxiao's words just now, Shen Qinghuan instinctively shrank. Just looking at the person in front of me, I looked embarrassed. Once again, there was silence between the two, but as usual, Shen Qinghuan was still alone in embarrassment. All the moments they spent together were as if Ji Yanli had already rehearsed them beforehand. Always looking worried. Ji Yanli's phone rang a few times, and when he took out his phone, he saw a message from Xiao Yi, President, should Madame Xiao bring her suitcase over. Ji Yanli pressed off her phone directly, and a faint displeasure spread between her eyebrows. Shen Qinghuan saw the change in Ji Yanli's expression and noticed that the person in front of her seemed to have something unhappy. Just as I was about to step forward and ask what was going on, I suddenly heard several loud bangs outside the door. Shen Qinghuan was really scared by these loud noises. Subconsciously, he ran all the way and hid behind Ji Yanli. He carefully pulled behind Ji Yanli, poked out a small head, and looked out the door. Still muttering to himself. It seems that the villa is not so safe either. There won't be any thieves in this big night, right? Ji Yanli's eyebrows furrowed slightly. It was really unexpected that the person in front of him would have such a big mind. Looking down at the girl hiding behind her, she tightly held onto the corner of her clothes, with a faint smile on her lips. Saying in the direction of the door. Let her in. Shen Qinghuan looked bewildered. What does it mean? Did the loud noises just now indicate that there was not a bandit, but someone else, and that person was still known to the person in front of them? Ji Yanli turned his head and glanced at Shen Qinghuan behind him. He had just responded with a show of strength, but now he looked nervous and timid. It's quite cute. Who's outside? Shen Qinghuan asked in a low voice. Ji Yanli answered in a low voice. Your good friend. Ji Yanli knew that besides his ignorant niece, there was no one else who could beat him so recklessly at his doorstep. In no time, Ji Xiaoxiao appeared in front of the two of them. When I first walked over, I saw Ji Yanli standing in the middle of the living room. She has always been afraid of this uncle. In her eyes, she has always been an unfriendly existence, with a hot temper, a rebellious personality, and a down dot to dot earth cold demon king. Usually when I gather at home, I see people walking around, afraid of being caught and taught by this strict and unfriendly little uncle. Moreover, Ji Xiao Xiao knew that he was a person who had nothing to do all day. I dare not confront this young and handsome, but highly esteemed uncle in the family. But today, I went all out for my friends. Xia Qingwen, my uncle is so fierce, run quickly. As he spoke, 
he was already heading toward Shen Qinghuan and wanted to pull her away. Not close yet. Shen Qinghuan suddenly felt a strong force in his waist and pulled her out in an instant. When I opened my eyes again, I found myself in the embrace of Ji Yanli. Ji Xiao Xiao didn't dare to step forward when she saw Shen Qinghuan being picked up by her own little uncle. She just looked at Shen Qinghuan with concern and said urgently. Xia Qingwen, what's wrong with you? Didn't you say you're getting married? Why did you fall into my uncle's trap? If you have any difficulties, you can tell me directly and I'll find a way to rescue you. Shen Qinghuan looked at Ji Xiao Xiao in front of her with a worried expression on her face and didn't know how to comfort her for a moment. Turning his head to look at the man next to him, it was the first time he was so close to the man in front of him. Currently, it seems that the man next to him is not as cold and heartless as in the short novel. At least not as terrifying as that. At present, he is still quite easy to get along with. Ji Xiao Xiao thought that Shen Qinghuan was already scared out of her wits at this moment, and quickly said to Ji Yanli. Uncle, Xia Qingwen is a good girl. Don't punish her in this way. She is in trouble now, and I can help her solve it. You don't have to bother your elderly family anymore. If you want to marry a wife, I'll tell your grandparents. If they know you have an intention to marry a wife, don't be happy. But don't be irresponsible to your life and marry such a good girl to harm others. Shen Qinghuan was completely confused by Ji Xiao Xiao's speech, but it was not difficult to see that the man in front of him was seen by others as a demon-like existence. Just as I was about to say something, I heard the man beside me calmly shouting and screaming at Ji Zianov in front of me. No big or small. Ji Xiao Xiao suddenly became even more afraid. Oh no no, now her little Qinghuan is going to suffer.